Imagine a world where machines can think like us, solve problems we throw at them, learn new things independently. A world where technology is not just smart, it's super intelligent. But what does that really mean? Is it science fiction or science scary? Maybe both. Today we're diving into different types of AI. What do they mean and how close are we to them becoming a reality? Let's start by breaking down the technical terms and then see some real-world examples. First up, ANI, which stands for Narrow AI. That's the AI we've got right now. These are systems that do one thing really well, like playing chess, recognizing faces, or recommending videos. Think of it as a Swiss Army knife. It's versatile, but its skills are limited to the tasks it's been trained for. Now let's talk Aggie, the general AI. This is a hypothetical type of AI that has the same mental capabilities as a human. It can learn and understand new things, solve problems across different areas, adapt to new situations. Basically, it's like having a personal assistant who can do everything from scheduling your calendar to writing poetry. The key here is versatility. An AGI system would be able to transfer knowledge and skills from one area to another, much like us humans. It's the AI equivalent of being a jack of all trades. But wait, there's more. We've also got the ASI, the super AI. This is purely theoretical. We're talking about an AI that can surpass human intelligence and abilities. We're entering the realm of the Terminator and the Borg from Star Trek. But instead of ending the world, this AI could solve complex global issues like climate change or disease. The idea is that since humans came up with this AI, it could potentially be smarter than us in every way. And it's not just about raw intelligence. It's about being able to apply that intelligence to make decisions, solve problems, and even create solutions that are better than what we humans can come up with. Now that we've got the lingo down, let's look at some real-world examples to see where we stand today. AI or narrow AI. Like I said before, these systems are great at what they do, but they're limited to those tasks. For example, ChatGPT is a narrow AI. It's really good at generating text that flows naturally and makes sense in the context of a conversation. It can answer questions, summarize text, write stories, but try asking it to do something else, like diagnosing a medical condition or balancing a chemical equation. It might be able to provide some general information, but it's not going to be as accurate or useful as a tool that's specifically designed for those tasks. Now, let's talk about Aggie or general AI. This is the stuff of science fiction right now. We don't have any true Aggie systems. Most of the AI that we use every day is still Ani. But researchers believe that Aggie is possible, and they're working on it. Some people think that we're close to achieving Aggie. Others think that it's decades away. One approach to creating Aggie is to build systems that can learn from human data and then use that knowledge to solve new problems. Another approach is to try to mimic the structure of the human brain. We're still a long way from creating a truly general AI, but the progress we're making is exciting. And finally, ASI or Super AI. This is the stuff of Hollywood blockbusters. We're nowhere close to creating ASI. In fact, most experts agree that we're probably decades or centuries away from this kind of AI. Some people think that ASI will never be possible. They argue that there are fundamental limits to what machines can achieve. Others think that ASI is inevitable. They believe that once we create an AI that's smarter than us, it will be able to improve itself and become super intelligent very quickly. Now that we know the difference between these three types of AI, let's see where we currently stand and how close we are to achieving each one. When it comes to Ani or narrow AI, we're already there. As we've seen, we've got plenty of AI systems that are really good at doing one thing, whether it's playing chess or recommending videos. In fact, you're probably using AI right now without even realizing it. Your smartphone uses AI to recognize your face when you unlock it. Your streaming service uses AI to recommend new shows to watch. AI is all around us, 
and it's only getting more popular. As for Aggie or General AI, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting closer. Researchers are making progress in creating systems that can learn from human data and then use that knowledge to solve new problems. One day soon, we might have a GI systems that can help us with all sorts of tasks, from driving cars to diagnosing diseases. Finally, let's talk about ASE or Super AI. This is the one that Hollywood has made famous. You've probably heard of AI taking over the world, and it's not exactly a realistic fear. We're nowhere close to creating ASI. In fact, most experts agree that we're probably decades or centuries away from this kind of AI. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be thinking about it. As we create more powerful AI systems, we need to be careful about how we design them. We want to make sure that they're safe and beneficial for humanity. To get a sense of how close we might be to these different types of AI, let's check out a recent survey of experts. In this survey, experts were asked to estimate how long it would take until we achieve different types of AI, on average. Experts believe that we'll achieve Aggie or General AI within the next 40 years. And they think that we'll reach ASI or Super AI within the next 60 years. Of course, these are just estimates and no one knows for sure how long it will take us to achieve these kinds of AI. But it's interesting to see what experts think is possible. So what do you think? How close are we to Aggie and Ass? Let me know in the comments below. Also, what do you think will be the impact of Aggie and Ass on our society? Do you think it'll be positive or negative? Again, let me know in the comments below. All right, let's see some of the latest developments in AI research. One recent study from Google DeepMind has developed a new AI system called Gemini. This AI is really good at understanding and responding to natural language. It's not quite Aggie yet, but it's a step in the right direction. Another study from OpenAI has developed a new AI system called GPT-4. This AI is really good at generating realistic images from text descriptions. It's not quite ASI, but it's pretty impressive. And finally, a recent study from Microsoft has developed a new AI system called Copilot. This AI is really good at helping engineers code faster. It's not quite a GI, but it's pretty cool. At this point, you might be wondering what all this talk of AI means for the future of our society. Will robots take over the world? Will AI make our lives easier or harder? To be honest, no one knows for sure. But it is important to keep in mind the potential impact of AI as we develop more powerful systems. AI has the potential to change our world in big ways. It could help us solve some of the biggest challenges facing humanity today, like climate change and disease. Or it could end up being a huge mistake that we regret. Only time will tell what the future holds for AI. But one thing is for sure, it's going to be exciting to see how AI develops in the years and decades to come. You're probably wondering how you can stay up to date on all the latest developments in AI. Fortunately, there are plenty of great resources out there to help you learn more about. <laughs> One great place to start is the website of the AI Advantage. Here you'll find a wealth of information about AI, including tutorials, news, and blog posts. Another great resource is the AI Index Report. This report is published by the AI Index team at Stanford University. It provides a comprehensive overview of the state of AI research and development. Finally, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel where I'll be sharing the latest developments in AI research. What do you think about the different types of AI? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about artificial intelligence, check out the links below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.